गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स एम आई ऑडिबल ओके सो आक्स एवरी वन टू जॉइन इन फ्रॉम ऑल वेरी फ्यू स्टूडेंट्स आर अटेंडिंग राइट नाउ सो एनी वे so this is a class of professional elective 1 of 6th semester that is your railway engineering okay so we are entered we have entered in the fourth module fine in the last class we have started fourth module and in the previous module we are discussing we have discussed about geometric design okay idle alignment then factors affecting idle alignment then we have discussed about uh, gradient different types of gradient super elevation or cant then can deficiency can access safe speed of train permissible maximum speed of train circular curve transient curve numerical all these things we have already discussed in third module fine and in the last class we have started fourth module and starting with uh, what you have discussed in the last class do you remember we have discussed what in the last class so in the uh, last class we have discussed about rail joint right rail joint clear and uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, an introduction to high speed rail and we will go discussing about some rail fastener okay we have already discussed about rail fastener anyway but we again we go for discussing about rail fastener like a uh, fish plate like bearing plate like uh, different key screw which are used to fix a rail together along with fixing the rail with the slipper okay anyway so we'll start we'll not waste time we we'll just go directly to that particular class where first we'll go in just a go for an overview of a high speed rail introduction to high speed rail fine then we'll go to the fastener okay will go very uh, roughly okay okay for that let me i have to share my screen now let me share share my screen first then we'll discuss okay so is it visible to you everyone is it visible yes or no okay so in the last class we have discussed about rail joint okay what are the uh, effect of rail joint which is also considered as a weakest link in a particular railway track okay so if someone asks you uh, what do you mean by weakest link and what is the weakest weakest link in a particular railway track then answer will be your rail joint it is considered as the weakest link in a rail track fine and there are different effect of rail joint so we have already discussed in the last class fine so today today we'll go in the overview of first about the high speed rail fine now what is an high speed rail in short it hs rail also be considered so international union of railway uic defines a highway or defines a high speed train as one that run at over 250 km per hour on dedicated track or at over 200 km per hour on upgraded conventional track that means dedicated track means in a particular track which is strictly constructed to run above or uh, to run for high speed train or we can also modify a conventional track so that even a high speed rail can also be 
uh, move over a conventional track. Okay, that means not meant to be uh, meant to be run uh, for high speed rate, but they have improved. Okay, and that particular case when for upgraded conventional track, the high speed train and getting a speed over 200 km per hour. But when it comes to the actual uh, dedicated track, that means which are the track which are mainly uh, constructed for high speed train. Okay, in a particular track, we can go for 250. We can cross 200, that means can reach 250 km per hour. Very speed, okay. A high speed line is thus a new line designed to permit trains to operate at speed above 250 km per hour throughout the whole journey or at least over a significant part of the journey. Alternatively, alternatively, it could also an upgrade conventional line suitable for carrying traffic at speed above 200 km per hour. Okay, that means high speed rail mainly deal with your speed, which reduce the um, time of the operation. Okay, so why we need high speed rail? Basically, it's all interrelated. Uh, development of a particular country is interrelated with high speed rail also. Okay, with high speed rail, we can reduce time, we can improve the development. Okay. So development of high speed track in India has become uh, inevitable. Inevitable due to ever increasing demand of traffic and faster service. Okay, there is a, a rapid demand for uh, faster service basically because of that we uh, time consumption is a very important factor right now. And to reduce the time factor, we can go for adopting a high speed train. Okay. So, however, a proper planning should be done and routes identified so that a concerned effort is made on these routes for, improve, for improvement of track and track geometry by proper allocation of resources. Work to be undergone, undertaken should be properly planned and executed to require tolerance so that there are minimum constraints after the introduction of highway speed trains. So that means uh, before going for construction of high speed rail, there are different factors. There are uh, different factors irrespective of the traditional conventional railway track. Okay, since it <coughs> moves too fast. Okay, so it's logical. We do not, we usually avoid curve. We usually avoid obstruction. We usually avoid crossroad. Okay, means. We don't need any disturbance in reduction in speed of the train. Okay, so high before going in a construction of the high speed track, more factors would be considered like geometry of the railway track, okay, and the environment, or you can say the whole railway track geometry we should consider. It should be properly planned and executed so that to re uh, tolerance should be maintained. For speed in the range 200 km per hour and higher, it is necessary that alternative routes are decided and new construction taken up uh, conforming to the high standard. That means if you want to construct a high speed railway track, it's better to construct separately. That means in a particular track, you have to consider it separately for only for high speed train. Okay, that means in a particular track, in a particular track, if a high speed train is moving in the particular train should not be used by other train other train types okay it will reduce the uh, it will make cause disturbance in the in the movement of the high speed train okay or you can say that in a whole operation of the high speed train right now the infrastructure of high, uh, the infrastructure requirement of high speed rail that means if you want to uh, high speed rail construction what are the main Factors are mainly affecting, or what are the fact, uh, construction mainly we require for high speed rail. A number of complex issues have been addressed for providing sound infrastructure for high speed rail, like track. So that means uh, there is specially designed track should be there. Okay, so it includes specially designed track with properly compact formation and op appropriate track geometry. That means the mo the particular for foundation of the track. Formation, the ballast, okay, or oh, and a sleeper 
grail all as a whole whole related must be of good quality and properly compacted formation okay the the trunk must be laid over properly compacted formation okay bridges and tunnels this includes advanced design bridges and tunnels with special emphasis on approaches okay then rolling stock rolling stock included the locomotive or engine part and the uh, compartment or wagon part there is a whole the this includes dedicated coaching stocks and high speed locomotive okay that means for maintaining the speed over 200 km per hour like around 250 or more that means your engine power should be high that means for for a high speed rail you should also need a high powered locomotive either it, it may be diesel or it may be electrical but you need a high speed locomotive for that then signaling that means we are not approaching for signaling chapter it is under model 5 we are also going to discuss about signaling okay but anyway even for high speed uh, track or high speed train a signaling technology should be high tech or appropriate okay and other miscellaneous issues like it includes great separation fencing and environmental protection area issues okay all these things should be taken in consideration uh, and are also included in infrastructure required for high speed rail okay then tracks structure for high speed rail like rails should be of high strength okay or high speed route for high speed route 60 kilometer sorry 60 kg rails are adopted by a railway okay the standard length of 225 meter in japan and 50 54 to 62 meter in germany and 108 meter in france has been utilized continuous welded rail is used to improve the ride quality and to reduce the noise and vibration continuous welded rail means what a particular rail which are connected by welded welding and by doing by welding to draw what we can achieve we can reduce the number of join okay and you know i think you already uh, understand that more join more disturbance and more weaker point okay you already know that a joint is considered as a, a rail joint is considered as a weakest link of a track okay and to minimize this weakest link what do we can do we can minimize the number of joint and how can we minimize the number of joint by welding to rail okay so we can also go for continuous welded rail uh, in high speed railway train which can be used to uh, improve the quality and reduce noise and vibration even for sleeper we can use the pre-stressed sleeper concrete sleeper have been better choice as they have a long life like 50 to 60 meters sorry 50 to 60 years okay slippers density of uh, 1660 is being used on the indian railway and could also be adequate for high speed route as this is the maximum density to carry out machine maintenance so about the rail slipper density we have already discussed right so basically we are going basically the standard value is 1660 can, can be used for high speed rail also then fastening double elastic rail fasteners or fastenings are necessary for concrete sleeper track the rubber pads are used as cushioning material between the rail and sleepers fastened by leaf spring or wear spring okay these all are screws basically okay and they are used for distribution of vertical loads and for dump, uh, damping the vibration i'll show you some one image for you let me i'll show you i'm not okay wait okay this is not uh, exactly uh, it's a proper drawing for a proper image for high speed rail. it's a general railway track okay so basically this is a top view of a railway track where you can see this is a rail fine this is a concrete sleeper i think it is visible right 
this is the sleeper this is the sleeper okay this is the rail okay okay these are the liner okay we are going to discuss about that in coming class in coming lectures liner okay this is your rubber base okay this is the key this is the key okay and we're going to discuss about that basically these fastener are used to maintain the proper alignment of the rail and the sleeper and it is it's used to prevent the horizontal and vertical displacement of the rail and the sleeper okay so even for high speed rail wait is wait even for high speed rail also we can use this special fastener okay so that a, a damper can also be used to reduce the vibration or to absorb the vibration anyway curves for highways are high speed rail so basically the flat curves are generally adopted in high speed track flat track flat curves that means no no we do we basically usually avoid a steep curve okay because in a steep curve uh, we have to reduce the speed for safety purpose so to maintain the speed we usually go for flat curves uh, when it comes to high speed rails okay okay so the mini the minimum radius of curvature for high speed uh, line or high speed railway track are generally varies from 4000 meter to 7000 meter for standard coach okay so you can see some tabular form are given here for geometric parameter of track for various high speed rail on world on world railway that means in different country what are different values are uses various various geometric parameters are uses for high speed rails like design speed like minimum radius of the curvature or maximum super elevation or can can deficiency maximum can gradient then minimum vertical radius vertical radius for basically for gradient okay and transition curve land okay this is basically transition curve land transition curve okay okay wait transition curve land so different country like france uh germany spain and belgium they have used different value minimum maximum minimum maximum are given here okay and then level crossing and grade separation level crossing when one a particular uh, railway track are crossed by our highway in different areas you can i think you have also seen this level crossing normally level crossing is not suitable for high speed train operation and therefore for road transport i'll show you on a uh, level crossing so that you have a greater uh, view okay Yeah, this key, even when your railway crossed, here you can see a level crossing. Okay. When a railway line crossed in a very part perpendicular to the highway. In every railway crossing, I think you have visit, right? Even nearby the our downtown university, there is a, a level crossing. So for high speed rail, we basically we generally avoid level crossing okay we don't need any disturbance in uh, movement of the high, high speed rail basically then uh, fencing on high speed line um, transpassing is very risky and thus not at all permitted that, that means we it's better to protect the high speed railway track okay you all you also heard different accidents near going on different railway track right because of the not properly fencing and especially fencing is required for high speed railway track okay 
So therefore, the entire high-speed track is to be provided with fencing. It is noticed from the experience of high-speed corridor, corridor world around that at very high speeds track, the track ballast stones sometimes fly off and hit the surrounding. To avoid such incidents, also track speed is required. That means when a particular train moves over a railway track, and if the track is if the train is in a moving in a high speed, uh, high speed, then a aggregate ballast can come out of the track and uh, may hit the surrounding. Okay, so for protecting the surrounding also. In order to pro in order to protect the surrounding, fencing can also be provided. Okay. So this is all about your uh, ra uh, high speed railway uh, train. Okay, you can say high high speed railway. It is a very brief introduction to your high speed railway. Fine. Okay. So this is the first part. Then we'll start uh, discussing about some fastener. Okay, that used in railway. Fine, I'll show you some fastener that can be used in railway. So, various fitting and fastener. Okay, so basically, the fittings and fast uh, fixed fixtures, or you can say fastener. What is the purpose? Basically, there this uh, the purpose of providing fittings or fastenings in railway track is to hold the rail in their proper position in order to ensure smooth running of train these fittings and fastening uh, fastenings are used to used for joining the rails together as well as fitting them to sleeper they serve their purpose so so well that the level alignment and gauge of the railway track are maintained within permissible limit even during the passing of the train that means a rail when move along a railway track it creates a vibration right and because of the impact uh, the, it, it is like a dynamic impact coming on the railway track and the course of time a railway track may divert it from its proper alignment that means a rail may uh, come out come out of the track a slipper may get fail okay that means to maintain or to ma uh, to maintain the proper position of ra rail and sleeper along with the ballast in the proper alignment uh, and to avoid horizontal and vertical displacement of the rail and the sleeper we go for fitting and fastening the rail together as well as to join the rail with the sleeper clear now we know how can we uh, join two rail using using a, a fish plate right we already discussed about fish plate okay we can go for wait Wait a second, okay? So here you can see how can we uh, join uh, two rail by using a fish plate. Here you can see the fish plate, okay? Fish plate can be used in one direction or both direction, okay? So you can also use a fish plate or combination of fish plate. That means we can use uh, a fish plate in both direction in the rail to join to a rail. Okay, I'll show you our original picture of fish plate. It is already shown to you anyway. Let's see. Okay, let's check. Yeah. 
Here you can see in this drawing, these are fish plates. Okay, so here in this particular drawing, two rails section are joined together using this fish plate and using this four nuts and bolt. Okay, it's fastened by up to four numbers of nuts and bolt. Okay. Basically, the, the name fish plate derives from the fish shape section of this fitting. That means this is the this section. This section of the rail is basically look like a fish. Okay, the uh, face of the fish. That's why the, this is called fish plate. Okay, the name fish plate derives from the fish shape section of this fitting. It, this section is look like a fish. Okay. The function of the fish plate is to hold two rail together in both in horizontal and vertical plane. That means because of this fish plate, these rails are so tight together. That means it will not allow to move in any direction. That means it will not allow in horizontal direction, not in vertical direction. Okay. That means the the movement of the rail in vertical and horizontal direction are restricted by this fish plate. Okay. The fish plates are manufactured using the typical special type of steel like Indian uh, railway uh, section T-1 slash 57. This is a quote for using the fish plane in Indian standard. Okay. And what is the uh, composition of the fish plate? Uh, uh, the material, it's made of carbon, magnesium, okay, silicon, like that. Different percentages are also given here. Fine. So you can say this is a fish plate. This is a fish plate. This, this is two rail. This is a part of the another one rail. This is a, another part of the rail. Okay. This is a fish plate. These are the fish bolt. Four numbers of bolts are provided. And you can see the two. This is the gap. Okay. This is a joint basically. Okay. Here, even here also, you can see this is a gap. This is a expansion gap is provided. And this is the joint. And this is the weakest section in the rail. Okay. We can also use a uh, fish plate in both direction. This is a, a section view of a fish plate. Okay, we just need some uh, overview of the that. Okay, there are some. Here you can see combine a combination of fish plate means in a in a particular railway track in a both direction fish plate is uh, used basically. Okay, all right. Okay, so to rail to join two rail we can use fish plate and to join rails to sleeper we have different type of fastener. Depending on the different type of sleeper we can use different fastener. So basically, in earlier time, you know, what how many types of uh, rails are there? Three types, right? One is your uh, double-headed, right? And what are they? Do you remember? One is flat-footed, bull-headed, river or not? And so anyway, so that bull headed and a dumbbell shaped rail are basically are fastened or fixed with the sleeper or you can see in order to fix the bull headed slip uh, bull, bull headed rails to sleeper we can use the dock spikes okay or flying ball screw spikes and bearing plates basically to use the wooden sleeper or you can say uh, in earlier time to join that uh, bullheaded also fine I'll show you one uh, picture for that wait okay these things are already discussed to join rail to rail what do we use a fish plate combination fish plate nuts and balls are used to join rails two rails and when, it's, when it comes to to join a rail to sleeper which especially wooden sleeper we can go for dog spy and why it's called dog spy because it's the head of the dog, uh, this spike is look like a dog. Okay, I'll show you. So, uh, fittings for wooden slipper. You can see, this, this is the dog spike. 
okay you can say this part is look like a dog ear this is a this is a dog ear dog face that's why it's called a dog spike basically okay or uh, yeah dog spike so these dog spikes are basically used to uh, fixed here you can see even this diagram it is a ci bearing plate for a bull headed rail okay bh rail means bull headed what is a bull headed the bottom and top face are similar of similar size okay this is a bull headed and to fix the bull headed rail of our sleeper what do we do first this bull headed rail is uh, fixed with this you can say this is your bearing plate okay this is the bearing plate and this bearing plate is fixed with the sleeper below this bearing plate there is a sleeper basically this bearing plate is used to increase the surface area of the top or increase the bottom surface area okay so that to distribute the load equally over the sleeper fine and this is your jaw and this is your spring key okay and basically spring key is used to maintain the exact position of the rail over this portion okay and here you can see this these two hole over these two holes this holes for spike you can see here now this through this hole you can say this uh, spikes are inserted these spikes are inserted okay i'll show you a actual image okay wait see this is a dog spike it's look like a uh this is a dog spike okay i think you can visualize right this is a dog spike and it's look like a dog dog face okay that's why it's called uh do a dog spike okay okay i'll show you one more thing let me check there is a let me give you one video okay i think somewhere it is there wait okay so here you can see dog spike is a fastening which is used for uh, fixing the rails with wooden slipper okay the number of dog spikes to be used depend on the location okay it's look like a dog shape and named as dog spike the head and the point of all sizes of dog spikes are identical and the shank is uniform having 16 millimeters square section shank means this part this is a head part this is a shank part okay and it's uniform and having it is a square section having 16 millimeter uh, you can say the width okay okay this is the actual uh, picture of the dog spike and this is a schematic diagram how the dog spikes are used to insert this is your you can see this is a rail this is a bottom part of the rail and this is a base plate or bearing plate you can see above this bearing place the rail is um, fixed and the rail bearing plates are fixed with the sleeper by fixing with a dog spike here you can see okay this is a schematic diagram of the dog spike okay even here, here there is a video i'll show you uh here you can see so here you can see this is a uh, this is how a dog spike can be uh, inserted in the field you can see that dog face is facing the rail okay and when it at the end this end will uh, fix at the position okay i'll show you at the end actually Here you can see this this dog face are facing the rail okay and like this you can use this uh, fastener okay and basically it is used for wooden slipper you can see this is a wooden slipper clear okay anyway so let me stop this yeah so dogs uh, dog dog spike fence bolt screw spikes and bearing plate their bearing plates I have already mentioned you can also go one by one by searching in Google you will see the images okay Similarly, for joining the rail to steel sleeper, we can use loose jaw, keys, and liner, okay? Like loose jaw means, I'll show you, I think, yeah. 
blue jaw here you can see this blue jaw this jaw is inserted in the sleeper and it is fixed in such a way that a rail can be fixed between that jaw okay that this loose jaw are used for holding the rail to steel trough sleeper basically steel sleeper with the help of keys okay there are some key also inserted between the jaw and the rail bottom part to hold the rail in position okay so i'll show you an image for rail jaw also let's see Here you can see, this is the basic diagram of rail jaw, okay. Here you can see, in the this is very clear now. Nah? This is the rail, uh, flat footed rail, okay. The uh, foot is flat and here the uh, loose jaw is inserted in a hole. The hole is created and uh, in this hole the jaw is fixed in such a way along with the key. Okay, key is basically, it can be a wooden, it can be a metal, uh, metal component, okay. And basically it is this key is used to uh, hold the rail in position okay let's say is there any proper view in rail key okay these are basically key different different key can be used okay basically what is key actually the keys are generally uh wet wet shaped wooden piece or metal piece they keep the rail in proper position okay basically this is the basic proper definition of keys okay they can be inserted inside the proper uh, fastening so that to hold the rail in position okay then tie bar and quarters basically tie bars and quarters are used to join cast iron sleeper together okay and uh, the quarter basically it is a tie bars and quarter let me show you one here also So basically tie bars and quarters are what? Uh, okay. Somewhere it is here. Tie bar basically are used to connect to sleeper. Connect to sleeper. Okay, I think somewhere it is here. Okay, wait. So rails are fixed to cast iron sleeper using cutter and tie bar. Fine. Cutter, I'll show you what is cutter and image I'll show you. Okay. And tie bar regarding tie bar is not explained properly here, but basically what is tie bar? Uh, let me give you a general definition whether it is there or not. Wait. Okay. This tie bar can also be known as a rail gods road or also gods tie road. It is basically member a member a member bar which is used specially designed to join two steel rail at the rail bottom to protect the rails from tilting and keep the rail in certain rail gods. Okay, basically this is the definition for uh, tie bar. Basically, it is used to join or hold two sleeper together. Okay. And quarter, quarter basically they are a key basically. I'll show you some here images are there or not. Yeah, here you can see this kind of thing. Uh, here you can see this is the quarter. Okay, this is used to join anything. So this is actually a fastener basically. Okay, it is a cross section of a railway. Okay, section. So you can see one sleeper is there, another sleeper is maybe there. So can be used uh, join these two sleeper with the tie bar and the tie bar are joined with a uh, this cotter okay this is tie bar and cotter basically that is a cross section of a railway section where this is a rail okay and this is a base plate here might be sleeper and below this it is a tie bar okay and 
elastic fastener to be used with a concrete steel and wooden sleeper so basically usually nowadays we go for using elastic fastener and we basically avoid dog spikes although dog spikes are cheaper okay but what is the problem with dog spikes so suppose uh, i'll show you one diagram suppose this is a railway line a railway um, suppose train is moving in this direction okay and suppose the and sleeper will be in this direction right and show you one direction like this and like this they are sleeper right oh, it's gone suppose this is a railway track railway track they are sleeper right and this uh, sleeper are fastened with the uh, uh, slip uh, rail with some fastener suppose dog spikes are you dog spikes like they are inserting like this right okay they are inserted like it and when a train is moving along this direction and you already know the train due to the speed and the load it create a uh, this wave motion right and due to this move motion the dog spike you um with due course of time it's coming upward direction okay and it it may come out of the system okay so this is a some certain disadvantage of that so nowadays we go for elastic fastener basically elastic fastener are why is called elastic it can also absorb the vibration okay it, so it can resist the vibration so that it should not come out of the system at particular time of the moment okay so basically uh, we go for using this uh, pendrel clip basically i'll show you usually you can see in this uh, railway track okay so here you can see this is a basic diagram of the elastic fastener and e type basically it is look like a e key it's look look like a e key E, uh, like a E shape of key that's why it's called uh, E type rail clip okay so here you can see this is a rail section here even you can see in the rail section flat footed rail section okay and this flat footed rail section are fastened by this elastic um, rail clip this is a rail clip okay and it's inserted here okay and this is this is a different part of the section like rubber pad is also used inserted at the bottom okay that means between the sleeper and the uh, rail there is a rubber pad is used to absorb the vibration okay and different part also be there fine this is a e type of clip okay so this is the type of e, uh, clip we can use in uh, railway okay let me show you one this is a c you can see this is a e type clip okay uh, the main advantage of this E-type clip is what? It is a elastic in nature. That means it can absorb the vibration and it will not come out of the system like the dog legs, uh, dog legs spike, right? It, although it's a little expensive uh, compared to dog legs spike, but we can use go for uh, E-clip because of the safety purpose, okay? In different country, different fastener can be used, okay? They are, if you go through searching in Google or in textbook, you will find different fastener okay in next uh, class i will show you one video so that we can have a clear picture about that fastening okay clear you can also search in google and go for um go through the textbooks you will find more information about fastener okay different criteria for fastener different types of fastener for different uh different type of rail and different type of sleeper fine so this is all about today class. We have discussed about high speed trail and different fastener. Clear? So with this, I just want to close my sharing here. And one more thing, within uh, five minutes, the meeting will be over. Now I'm going to take your attendance. So if somebody missed out the attendance, so please rejoin the link and take, uh, give the attendance, okay? Clear? So let me first stop my recording here and I'll take your attendance.